In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, good morning, and welcome to our Saturday devotion, week two of Easter. Our gospel passage is taken from John chapter 6, verses 16 to 21. And today, we reflect on walking on the water. Franklin Roosevelt, in his first inaugural address in the year 1933, as the new American president of the USA, said the following famous words, and I quote, The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. End of the quote. In today's gospel, Jesus says in verse 20, It is I, do not be afraid. Jesus commands this to the twelve when they give in to panic upon seeing him walk on the water. There was a story I read about a tourist who asked how much it would cost to experience a boat ride in the Sea of Galilee. 100 pounds, said the boatman. No wonder Jesus walked on water, <laughs> was the tourist reply. <laughs> the disciples think that they are seeing a ghost. He reassures them why they think they are seeing a ghost. It is because the Jews believe that when anyone sees God face to face, he dies. Like, for example, Moses, he saw only the back of God. And after that, he had to put a veil over his face when he went down from the mountain because the Israelites could not look at the radiance of his face. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water, do they see a ghost or are they afraid to see God who is Jesus face to face and this means they will die? We should not be afraid of Jesus seeing him walking on the water because this is an ordinary thing for him to do. In the four Gospels, we find also Jesus saying, Do not be afraid. No less than 15 times. In fact, it has often been said that fear not is the most often repeated commandment of the Bible more than 365 times. Can you imagine? So every day of the year <laughs> can be allocated a statement, do not be afraid. My son, do not be afraid. My daughter, do not be afraid when you go to bed, when you rise up during the day, every moment, fear not. Psychologist John B. Watson and Paul Ekman have argued that fear is in it in all human beings. Fear is a defensive and survival advantage. It is usually a response to a particular stimulus. Like, for example, a person may see a spider and experience fear. Fear serves as motivation to escape to safety. And all of us 
experience fears, real or imagined, limitations and inadequacies in this life. That is why our tendency is always to back out, hesitate or even run away from difficult situations. I am sure what we need is more prayer and faithfulness in order for us not to be afraid. And Jesus never tires of reassuring us not to be afraid. And not only these words, he prays for us. He promises the help of the Holy Spirit. He gives us the Eucharist and promises to be with us always until the end of the world. He gives us his mother. In other words, Jesus is there to calm the storms of our lives. But sometimes he lets the storm rage and calms his child. This actually is very true. At the end, my dear friend, I hope and pray that this story, which is a tragic story, will not happen to us. Let me tell you a story that I once read. Once upon a time, there was a woman who lived with her child, a seven-year-old daughter. Her husband lived far away. He would come once in a while. One day, this woman, who was now seven months pregnant, was walking along a river bank with her daughter. Suddenly, the beautiful girl slipped into the river. The mother tried to see whether she could save her, but because of the fear of water, and of course the fact that she was heavily pregnant, she started screaming. She screamed. She screamed in terror. She couldn't swim. And of course, besides, she was, as we have said, in the later stage of her pregnancy, towards the eighth month. And she watched her daughter drown. Finally, somebody heard her screaming and rushed down to the riverbank. The utter tragedy was when they stepped into those murky waters to retrieve now the child who was dead, they found that the water was only waist deep. The mother could have simply stepped in and saved her daughter. She could have easily done it. She could have easily saved the child, but did not because, one, lack of knowledge, and number two, the fear that she had. And the baby died. The beautiful girl died. And this is a reminder to each one of us. Many are the times that we did not take risk in life because of the fear. In a reflection I gave last week, I think, I said that uh, there are people, even up to now, who have never entered into any committed life because they are afraid. Kunawegine, they have not even tried business because they are afraid. Today, fear is governing quite a good number of us. And this morning, I want to tell you that every day of the year, is allocated these words. Do not be afraid every day. Those of you who are stuck and they do not know what to do with life and fear is gripping them, do not be afraid, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. Our students, from whatever level, especially those who feel so much afraid, and who are losing hope because of the situation in this country. Dear sons and daughters, do not be afraid. Wherever it is that you are, my dear good people, 
whatever it is that you are facing, please know that every day of the year is biblically allocated these words. Do not be afraid. Even this early morning of Saturday, I'm telling you, please do not be afraid. If fear is keeping you down, rise up and say, I was not made for this. And listen to these words of Franklin Roosevelt. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And because we have been told not to fear, we won't. Our trust is in the Lord. The fear with corona or not, with floods or not, with hunger or not, our trust is in the Lord. We will not be colonized by fear as the Lord lives. Thank you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, do have a blessed and a fearless Saturday. Asante.